down. Sorry, break it down. Break it down. I'll break it. Go on. All right, hit it. Hit what we hit. What we hit. What we hit. What we hit. There we go. That's <laughs> your podcast. That's what's up. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, this this what we do. You know what I mean? We got we got the infamous Tyra Jack Clean in the house. Hey. <laughs> yeah. You know Tonight's guests are financial literacy educator, Miss Jack Clean. What's good with you? Hey, everything. I opened up my eyes this morning, so I am oh. grateful. <laughs> listen, that's what's up. And I'm healthy. Uh, listen, that's all that matters. And I got here safely. Yes. Yes, you did. Yes. Yes, you did. Too bad you parked all the way at the top of the block, though. <laughs> When it was a, it, it was a spot like right in front of the door, y'all. <laughs> I thought I was going to lose the parking game, so I did the safe thing. And look at that, she out slicked herself. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, you know, she out. She's like, "What? No, this is a spot right here. I'm going to park right here." And it was a spot right in front of the door. <laughs> so, Miss Jacqueline, tell us. Yes. What is a financial literacy edu- literacy? Educator. Yeah, so I am a self proclaimed financial literacy educator. I'm mm-hmm. just out here trying to deliver the knowledge because at the end of the day, uh, knowledge and game is free. Yes, yes. And I'm yes. out here just trying to give it to people. And at the end of the day, um, if someone's listening to me and they learn one thing that mm-hmm. can better their lives, I've done my job. Uh-oh. Mm-hmm. Oh. So now where does the influencer part come in? Because, um, you know, I'm the star of my own media empire, okay? Oh, <laughs> say no more. <laughs> say no more, so, yo. Of course. So uh, I'm, a, I'm an influencer because I want to influence and enrich minds out here. Yes. Okay. So okay. not just an influencer. I'm an enricher. Enricher. <laughs> oh, so wait, how did you get into this field of work? Um, okay. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So initially, I um, I had some things going on on my on my own credit. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I saw something on social media. I said, "Let me check this out." I checked it out, and um, it made all the sense to me. And God said, "It's cool. Go ahead, Tyra." So uh, you know, I hopped on board. Basically, hey, long hey, story hey, short, hey, you killed it. Hey, I'm here. I'm here, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, so I'm doing something right. Let me, I'm hold, here. Let me, let me hold a couple of hours. <laughs> <laughs> that's, how, we, we that, that's, that's how we put them on the spot. We'll, yeah. we'll talk about that off air, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, well, do you have to have any sort of certifications or or degree to be a financial educator? Um, no, not 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 in my field. Um. There are associations out here for uh, some Mm -hmm. of the things that I do that you can get a piece of paper from, but it's not mandatory, number one. Also, I have uh, help of um, attorneys. I have help of attorneys as well. So uh, they they do the the legal parts of it. So Oh, get out. Get out. So So, now, now please, now break it down. mm -hmm. I'm a client. Mm -hmm. How would you help me? Okay. Talk to me from start to finish. From start to finish. Okay. Well, uh, first and foremost, we have to do a personal consultation. I have to do a fact finding and um, take a look at from what you got going on on your three credit bureaus. Okay. Okay. And um, and what I need people to understand when it comes to credit, because credit is just one of the things that I do. When it comes to credit, um, there's two parts to your credit. It's your credit report and it's the credit scores. Okay, so two separate entities. However, they are husband and wife, meaning they need to be worked at the same time time. and they need to be worked together. So um, so some people are in a boat where they either need help cleaning up their credit report and they need help increasing their credit scores or they might just need help increasing their credit scores. But of course, we don't know that. I don't know that until. I see what's going on on your credit. Okay. So if your credit report is quote unquote dirty, and we're so we talking dirty now. <laughs> now, now, what is considered dirty? Like five hundred, six hundred? No, no, no. Uh, well, that, that, you're talking about the scores. Oh, oh. I'm talking oh. about the actual report. Oh, okay. First, okay. first and foremost is your report because anywhere you go to a place where they're pulling credit, they're not just looking at your score. They're looking at your report primarily. 
Okay. And okay. they're looking at your history. So let's say you got a couple of collections, you got a couple of charge off, you got some late payments. You know, I come across everything. Oh, that, a lot that's of dirty. inquiries. So that's, you know, essentially that's a dirty credit report. Um, repossessions. And and here's the thing, there's a there's a law that was enacted by Congress, which is the Fair Credit Reporter Act. In layman's terms, we can dispute anything negative on your credit report because that's that's our right by law when it okay. comes to personal okay. credit that is our right by law so um the disputing process is just that you just basically you go through the legal um the legal processes of um disputing these negative items on your credit report to get it off if, right, if you want to go buy a house you can't buy a house if you just had a foreclosure or a bankruptcy but guess what that can be disputed to be removed you want to go buy a car they mm. they'll give you they might depending on where you go <laughs> to get your car uh, you know i go Dep- to my uncle the period where you go <laughs> even if you got a former repossession on your credit report they they yeah. that might not stop you from getting the car but your your interest rate going to be in the double digits uh, true. and i tell people true. all the time if you pay in double digits for for your car interest you paying entirely too much so when you come to me we we going to Get you, you know, clean up your credit report as mm-hmm. good as possible because first and foremost, well, I need everybody to understand for people who need help with their credit, there's no guarantees in credit, period. And if someone is promising you anything, if anyone is guaranteeing you anything, and that number one is against the law and it's unethical, there's no oh. guarantees, period. But is it worth a try? Of course. You got to do something. Okay, you got to so do something. So some of those to ads we see, where they be like, "Well, we can knock, we can do this, we can knock that out." I mean, like can that? they? Yeah. Oh, okay. They, okay. Yeah, but can they promise you? No. Oh, okay. Oh. It's all in Y'all the word, that? and people people can get tripped up in the word, and but if they using those words like guarantee and I promise this, unless they're saying. We going to guarantee this or your money back. That's fine. Okay. okay. If they're going to okay. give you your money back, yeah. But, you know, I'm, I'm telling you up front, <laughs> there's no guarantee here. <laughs> the, the, what we, the goal is to clean you up. Mm-hmm. And then also I'm going to work with you to increase your credit scores as well, which um, by doing that, you have to um, just involve trade lines. A lot of people I come to, adults, 30s, 40s, 50s, they never had a real credit card or they may have had one 5, 10, 15 years ago because they think credit cards are the devil and they're not, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, or they, they, you know, they, they're they driving a lemon because they can't get a car, even with a co-signer, they can't get a car. <laughs> if you need a co-signer, that, if you need a co-signer to, to, to get a car, make sure they don't need a co-signer too. <laughs> when your co-signer need a co-signer, <laughs> you got problems. <laughs> but um, the, the the importance is, as I stated, is cleaning up yeah. your credit report as good as possible and then increasing the credit scores. And there's so many ways to increase a credit score. Now, can you dispute, a, 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 I would say, an issue on your credit report, even though you know you not really should you shouldn't be disputing it <laughs> it depends is m- multiple reasons you can be disputing something that's um that's what uh factual disputing coming in but yeah you even if it is yours even if you owe it you know you're just you, dispute it you, you can still dispute it <laughs> hold on i gotta make a phone call we're gonna take a break <laughs> <laughs> but that hey the, the fair credit reporter act said we can do it so Hey, you use these laws to your advantage, people. That's why it's important to be educated and informed. And that's why there are people like myself here to educate and inform you. Okay. Yeah. You know, I remember the years ago, I used to get them calls about from, you know, a, a financial educator. And I'd be like, oh, man, no, somebody is trying to get my money, you know, and I would just brush them off. Mm-hmm. But now I believe as I got older. Now I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. You know. Well, yeah, because now your awareness has raised. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, think about it. Back then, you didn't know. We wasn't. You wasn't in the know. No, I didn't. Now, I didn't yeah. care. Yeah. Even even in college, they just give you a credit card. Oh, let's not talk about college. Hey, Come yeah. Fill out oh. These credit applications for a slice of pizza or a t-shirt. Yeah. Yes. Because I definitely did it. I did it in college. <laughs> you weren't the only one. <laughs> you weren't the only one. We all did it. Yeah, we all we did just it. Wanted the pizza. <laughs> Oh, oh, then you got, oh, what is this in the mail? Mm-hmm. Oh, guess what? Yeah. More pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I got my first credit card in college. I think the credit limit was like $300. It wasn't an unsecured credit card, but hey, that's what helped jumpstart my credit. Yeah. So, so now, 
breakdowns, I'm sure some people may not know, can mm -hmm. give us a difference between a secured and unsecured credit card. Yes. So an unsecured credit card is basically you filled out the application, they sent you a credit card in the mail, they said this is your credit limit. Mm -hmm. A secure credit card is when you have to use your own funds to get it started. Okay. So it's similar to a debit card, but it's not because debit cards, unless it's a, a debit credit building card because there are some out here um is essentially used like a debit card you start with your own money you can't go over the limit because it's your your money is it, there you're spending okay? your money so it's like look at it as a security deposit basically so uh but the company that you are applying to for it will tell you what your minimum has to be mm, okay mm -hmm. um a lot of banks is three hundred dollars, but the um, but actually the the secure card that I offer the minimum is only one hundred. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know we gotta put we gotta put that in the description. <laughs> we gotta put that. So they are good for building your credit. Oh heck yeah, because uh, credit cards actually contribute to your credit score ninety percent. Ninety. Yeah. Well, so you you're you're you cheating yourself out of ninety percent of your credit score with not having a credit card. Wow. Would you like me to break that down for you? Yes, please do. Let me break it down for break you. Break it down. Break it down. Let's start with the, the biggest chunk because there is an actual uh, five factors when it comes to your credit scores. Uh, the biggest chunk is 35%, which is your uh, payment history. So you mm -hmm. missed, you have one late payment. You can kill yourself 50 to 100 points, man, when it comes Are to you your credit one, score. One, one late, late payment. payment can kick your behind. I'm going to make sure I, I'm, I'm going to try my best to keep this clean, y'all, okay? <laughs> one late payment can kick your butt. I'll translate it. One late payment can kick your ass. Okay, I can say ass. It's all good. <laughs> I'll, say I, ass. I'll say ass. Okay. <laughs> one late payment will kick your ass. Okay, so that's because that's 35% of your credit score. So wow. the highest credit score you can have is 850. So multiply... 35 percent of 850 that's how much you're hurting yourself every 30 days one late payment takes away three on-time payments it also takes nine months to come back from one yeah. one late payment could take nine months it takes nine months to recover from when it comes to your score yeah so think about wow. people that got 60 days 90 day 120 150 then when you oh, get up to talking about a, a couple of years so now you get to 150 to 180 days now they're going to either charge it off or send it to collections but yeah i still see 180 days sometimes that's six months you didn't pay it and you're killing your score every each month mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. one late payment take nine months to come from so that's multiplied nine times six that's 54 right so mm -hmm. we're talking about a couple of years just coming back from these multiple late payments biggest chunk of your credit score so that's 35 wow. percent. so okay. then 30 percent which is the next biggest chunk is actually credit card utilization this is why credit cards are important as well okay um people believe that 30 percent means um let me keep all my credit cards at 30% utilization. That is 100% incorrect. So let me explain that. Yes, break it down. Let me break, break it down. Break it down. And I'm going to break it down in simple money. numbers. Money about to break I'm, it down. <laughs> I'm going to break it down in simple numbers, y'all. So let's say you have two credit cards and the limits on both of them are $500. Okay. So we know 500 and 500 that's $1,000. So when you actually see that 30%, that 30% is actually the comparison of your total balances compared to your total limits. So we got our two cards, 500 and 500 together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That makes a thousand. We agree, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So that 30% actually means that the balances on each credit card should be no bigger than 150. 150 times two, 150, 150, that's 300. Mm -hmm. If you divide 300, uh, 1,000 to 300, that's 30%, correct? That's yes. what 30% actually mean. Not keep all your credit cards at 30%. Because let's say if you kept both those credit cards at 30%, now you're at 300 and 300, that's 600, that's 60% of that 1000 So you want to keep <clears throat> rather you got two, one, two or three credit cards. Uh -huh. Keep them all combined. When you when you combining them all the limits and all the balance is what matters. But let me tell you, there's, number one, there's a formula uh, of, of where to keep your credit cards at, but without doing the formula, rule of thumb, keep all of your balances under 10%. That's the sweet spot. Oh. Mhm. Mm Man. Mhm. Mm and if you can keep I'm them on the five, that's can. even better. But people, but what I want yeah. people to understand is, please use your credit cards. Just use them responsibly. 
and pay them. And when you're paying your credit cards, you want to pay them by the statement date, not the due date. Don't let them trip you up on your credit card statements with the due date. You want to do it on the statement date. You want to pay it by the statement date, which is about three to four days before the actual due date. Oh, now I mean I now I'm glad you told me because I have I have like two credit cards that I don't even use because I I just like th- those are my emergency cards you know one of the biggest lies we were ever told oh. which is use your credit cards and only emergency purposes no yeah. use your credit cards for everything and you just pay them off that's all you got to do. Hey, yo, man, let me get that lollipop right there. <laughs> <laughs> Ten cents, I don't Just care. Use, yeah, give, me, the, give it to the, me. The, the danger in not using your credit cards is they, they can reduce your credit limits, which is going to hurt your credit score, or they will um, turn them off completely, which you're going to uh-huh. lose your credit history, which is the next biggest chunk of your credit score, which is 15%. Mm-hmm. So if you have old credit cards and they are still open, please keep them open by using them. Don't put them under the pillow. Don't cut them up. Don't call Capital wow. One and say your credit card is the devil, even though their interest rates are high. Don't don't call Capital One and say your credit card is the devil. I don't want anyone to know because closing those accounts actually will hurt your credit score. Okay? So that's the third factor. Fourth factor is... Um, your mix of credit which is the differences of revolving and installment accounts so um when you're looking Mm -hmm. at a good profile credit they like to see different types of accounts which is revolving and installment and installment is the type of accounts that you have where the payment is the same each month so we talk about your car note like car mortgage mortgage. uh, personal loan stuff like that and revolving is credit cards why because is think about it like a revolving door you're going to use them pay them down use them pay them down same, you know, yeah, round yeah. and around and around, right? <laughs> around so we then go. Uh, the last, so what's left is the ten percent of um, when you're applying for credit. So anytime you're applying for a credit and you get a hard inquiry or a hard pull, is showing up on your credit report. So of course, the least amount of inquiries that you have, the better. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to keep it under five a year. That's that's what it looks like the best. But here's the thing. Let's say even if you have a 700 credit score and you got 20 something inquiries on your credit report, you looking them thirsty. They don't like <laughs> lenders don't like that. They don't like they don't like <laughs> They don't like They don't like thirst, they, they don't like us thirsty. They don't like thirsty they can't thirst credit for it. reports. <laughs> no, no thirst trapping on your credit report. Yo, and and I that's get why that car right there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why when I um uh speaking with my clients, I tell them don't do anything with your credit before consulting with me first oh because i i have people they don't listen and they go apply for stuff they co-sign for stuff and then come tell me afterwards well i did this this, and that what did i tell you i told you not to do anything with your credit because there's things out there that you can do that don't they don't even touch your credit but now (laughs) i've seen a lot of places where they say um they don't do hard inquiries or mm-hmm. hard pulls. Mm-hmm. Um, even when they do a soft pull, mm-hmm. um, does that still most of the time? So soft pulls don't show up. They can, but most of the time they don't. Um, if you do, if there is a soft inquiry, soft inquiries only stay on for about a year. But hard inquiries stay on on your credit report for two years. But guess what? They can be removed from your credit report just like anything else, as long as it's a closed account. You don't want to um, remove an inquiry for an open account because it will actually close that open account down. Oh, period. seriously? Yes. Oh. Mm-hmm. But yep, inquiries just like anything else can be removed. And that's a game now when you uh on the other side building that business credit, that's it's a whole game to that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, we talking a whole a whole ball game, huh? The whole different type of ball game. See, this is the type of stuff I be trying to put people D on. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, oh, say my man Reese jumped in the head. Oh, yeah, you see Reese where he at? I see you, Reese. First and foremost, hold on, I forgot yeah. that, I forgot to give my props to my man Maurice. Because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. So shout out to you, uh, Reese. Probably the, one of the most sincere people yes, I've ever is. met in yes, my life. Is. Yes, he is. That's my broski So right thank there. you so much, Maurice. That's my broski. For mentioning right my name. Because let me tell y'all something. We heard growing up that it's not what you know, it's who you know. It's not who you know. It's who knows you. I have to agree with you on that. Who, who can say your name in yeah. a room? Yeah. That's how you get on. Yeah. 
Okay. That's how you get on. And, and if you're likable. You know? And if you're likable. If you're likable. Because if they don't like you, they, ain't, they don't mess with you. That's true. I know if I don't like you, I ain't But see, if they ain't like you, they them. wouldn't be saying your name in the first place. So like I said, <laughs> shout out to my man Reese, man. Shout yeah, out. I mean, Fellow I mean, Mustang right there. Let's, let's give that Reese red and gray. Yeah, let's, let's give him his flowers. That's right, man. Let's give him his flowers. <laughs> Let's give it a mm-hmm. So now, what type of marketing approach do you have to drum up more clients? Well, actually, I help people nationwide. So the majority of my marketing is online, Over. social media. Yeah, mm-hmm. and doing stuff like this. You know, yeah. and I have to thank you. I forgot to thank you for letting me come here because oh, you are exposing you me coming. to your audience first and foremost, and I'm exposing you to my That's audience. My, yes. Okay, because <laughs> we here, we here, we here. We <laughs> so so. Social media is a very big component, and um, it's so important to business. Period. Yes, it is. Because yes, we is. at the point now, if you it, it's like, what you doing? If you not on social media, as much as people hate it, hey, I, I uh, you know, I thank the good man above for social media because yeah. he 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 helps mm-hmm. he 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 helped me keep my lights on. The yeah, social well, media helped me keep the business. lights on. Yeah. Okay, I'm not especially going when you lie. got when you got a good following like you. Hey, look, mm-hmm. cause I see your chat just. Yeah, they yeah, I mean, it's like, no. Nope. They in here. They in here. <laughs> We're I in here. Uh-huh. Look, I give them, give them a thumbs up. <laughs> give them a thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm, very, so I'm, very, I'm very thankful for it, of course. <laughs> so now, what type of clients do you typically work with? Uh, do you work with the, the, the older generation, the younger generation? Um, or you just work with anybody. I can it? work with anybody. Um, but the people I like to target the most are people who like want to buy homes. Mm-hmm. Um, 95% of my clients want to purchase homes. They want to get they get their credit right to um, become a homeowner, you know, start trying to work towards that dream. Um, also, I do have an affinity for, of course, empowering women and empowering mm-hmm. mothers because I'm a mother. I'm a woman, you know, all this. So yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. really, I'm really um, in that lane as well. Well, um, you know, I do have dreams, not just for myself, but for my sisters, too, man, because it's so it's it's so many things out here that's in that's trying to defeat us. And, you know, I'm just here to say, keep keep yourself, keep your dreams alive, keep yes. your hopes alive, yes. man. Yeah. It, you know, we, we live in some tough times, but guess what? Just don't give up. Mm-hmm. No. Nah, and you can't. Mm-hmm. You can't. You can't. So now what sets? Tyra apart from other financial educators. Why would I want to hire a Tyra? Um, tell me. I'm going to tell you well, something about myself is I have a, a, a huge affinity for learning. So the more I learn, the more I can teach. That means the more I can give, the more value I can put out. So with someone like me and also I have mentors, man, I, um, I listen to people. If I want to be where you are, if I need to, if I if I want to know what you know, man, I, I'm I'm on there soaking up every day. Soaking up that knowledge. I'm soaking yes. it up, and not do I just soak it up? I regurgitate it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm going to give it to you, and I'm gonna give you as much as you can handle. But you just gotta be open to receive. Yeah, at the hey, end of the hey, day, what's that? What's that saying? You can lead them to water, but you. And guess and what? And I tell them that, well, especially when I'm speaking to like real estate agents and stuff, I tell them, I said, listen, when you when you send your clients to me, I'm going to take them to the water. I might even try to pull them in. <laughs> yeah. But they got to drink. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they so, have to drink. So themselves. share with us some expert advice. Please drop that. Drop that knowledge. What, what specifically do you want to like? What I want to know. Mm-hmm. How much should I put into my savings? Oh, OK. Every month. Uh, um, every month okay so when I'm t- talking to sp- people about you know saving money and budgeting one mm-hmm. good thing you can do is take 80% of your income and turn that into 100% and drop that other 20 in your savings Ooh. and um, another thing that something I've been harping on a lot lately is, um, is for, for people to take their money out of these commercial banks out of these commercial savings account. Go get yourself a high yield savings account where you get more money on your return every oh, year or every hold on, month. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on, I'm gonna get my man El Plago <laughs> shout out real quick. El Plago. I see you, Broski. <laughs> so take money out of commercial banking. Because I have two commercial banking accounts. Mm-hmm. What am I doing wrong? All right, okay, so here's the thing. Um, one, when it comes to fine, what these last few years for me in financial literacy, 
um, just like a whole lot of things, we got to unlearn a lot. Mm-hmm. And like I said, um, I listen to like the people that have that I would like to have, and the people that's get out there. I listen to them. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say a quote. Um, and this guy, he's they call him the Haitian CEO. He is he is a, um, a Philly CEO? guy. He a Philly guy. He is a Philly guy. Oh, he a Philly boy. He, he a Philly boy. <laughs> he wasn't born here in Philly, but he lived a lot of his life. And he said, you know, banking the banks they're for transactions, not for savings. So we got to pay our bills. So fine, yeah. have that part of your money there when you got to pay your bills. But it's not for saving your money, man. You got to yes. put 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 your money somewhere where it's going to work more for you. So that's why I've been uh, pushing the high yield savings account. You saw what Apple did about yes. a month ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, they, they're high, their high yield savings account, I think, is at 4.15. Then you got other banks, it's like 4.7, 7.4.5, even 5%, you know. So um, just, just to have your money working for you. Like, we all we all have to learn to work smarter and not harder. Mm-hmm. See, the one thing I love about having this show, because mm-hmm. I can pick her brains mm-hmm. without paying for it. <laughs> So. <laughs> it's good. It's so. all good because when if for all of you who are, who's desiring to become an entrepreneur or a business owner or whatever it is that you do, you're all you always supposed to be in a place of giving. Yes. You, got, you you have to give more than you receive always, and you know, and that's in anything in your life. Yeah, you know, of course, not, not just in business, but you talking about in your relationship, man. Everybody's talking about reciprocity here, fifty fifty from these young bulls, and I specifically said young bulls because old heads I don't talk like the way they do, but I'm gonna say it like that though <laughs> break it down, break it down. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying because there's no such thing really as 50 50 uh, for real for real but yeah. always um when you come in from a place of love give more to receive and you're gonna reap that in the future it might not be next week it might not even be next year but you but you know but it will it will come you back. will reap it will come back upon you. your harvest it will come back upon you period Right. Mm-hmm. So T, I, I want to hit you with some true and false. I always like to ask my guests this. Uh, I like to hit them with the true and false Let's questions. Go. And they fail. Mm-hmm. All right. First one, true or false. Does financial literacy empower people? Of course. I um so I feel we can do Black Wall Street again. Okay. You think so? Yep. We, you don't do. Now, actually, do you think they're going to attack it? I'm sure, they they do try to attack yeah. it. I mean, the devil always going to be busy. Okay. And he is busy. Period. But technically, there is. Like I'm telling you, I follow. I follow some heavy hitters that look just like me and you. Mm. I listen to them every day. I listen to different guys every way. So the Black Wall Street is here. Trust me, it's here. <laughs> it might yeah. not be in Tulsa. We it ain't a specific street, but it's but it's, it's, it's out there. It's it man, it's people out here doing it. It is they are okay. Um, but financial literacy, man, that, we talking about the liberation behind that. Let, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. tell you why financial literacy is so important. Um, somebody asked me to def- define financial literacy, and I said it the way. In my opinion, this is not from Webster Merriam Dictionary. But financial literacy is having a better relationship with your finances, having a better relationship with your money. Because finances is not just what you have in your pocket. Mm-hmm. It's not just what you have in your bank account. It's that credit, that personal credit. It's that business credit. It's that corporate credit. Yeah, that's another level. Uh, but Ooh. you got to know what to do with it, you know? Yeah, and that's why yeah. your credit is so important because it allows you to leverage what we call opium other people's money it also speaks to your character oh okay okay because they want to know do you pay your bills basically <laughs> okay yeah credit do speak to your character it does whether people want to admit or not and don't get me wrong something <laughs> um bless you um people anybody can fall on hard times you see people get sick and their credit go to crap yes yes divorces yes. you know stuff like that or something happened they file bankruptcy but it ain't nothing you can't bounce back from um i tell people all the time it ain't about where you was don't be ashamed about having bad credit because that's where you were be ashamed about not doing anything about it Mm. be ashamed about just staying in the same place because it's not going to get better by itself you got to make a (laughs) t-shirt I got I'm buying. I got a couple of teachers. I'm buying. <laughs> but <laughs> man, we got we have to improve our relationships with our finances, period. And it, that don't start in our pockets, that start in our heads. Yeah. Well, <laughs> if, if I remember back in the day, I mean they took financial literacy or financial education out, out of the school system. Mm-hmm. Of course, and that's all yeah. done. That's all done 
by design. They don't want us to be smart. Let's, let's be for real. Remember where our ancestors, when they were in slavery, man, if they caught you reading, what happened? They caught you trying to read you what got happened. That, you got beat. Because if we if we could stick together and like let's see, because like let's say they say black people our buying power is about 1.2, 1.3 trillion, something like that. Okay. You how many economies can we devastate if we pulled our if we just point stop three buying out of this country? Think about it. Yeah. So for and then you know where a lot of the money is? It's in the hood. In the hoods. Don't get me wrong. You got people talking mm. about they broke, but they were they got on Jordans. Uh, yeah. How many how many inches are these screens in here in this room? They broke, but they got these. They got the big. They got the big screens. Okay. Oh wow. Who, who lined up at the on, on Thanksgiving for Black Friday? I mean, everybody well, is, but don't get me wrong. These prom, prom these, parties. They be having some uh, extravagant uh, prom uh, parties. Oh man, I didn't see I, on social media. I saw these. <laughs> what? And, ooh, yeah. Lord, nah. Almost twenty thousand, thirty thousand dollars. Come for a prom. on, come on, why? Why? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, man, if we would just to pull our resources together, and uh, it, like I said, it has to start in your mind first. Okay, um, financial literacy is mindset. Okay, okay. It's not just what's in your pocket. It is. It start. It starts up it's, here. It's, oh, okay. All right. So let's let's get to number two. Okay, go ahead. Let's get to true and false number two. Mm-hmm. Does financial literacy breed ill-equipped adults? Of course. And I'm sorry, financial illiteracy. Oh, yes, because you got to think about it. You know, can't nobody teach you what they don't know. Yeah. So, and then another thing is, too, I'm not taking advice from nobody with a 400 credit score. So, um. <laughs> they give you advice a, on how to not pay. Uh, <laughs> does it breed a lot of ignorance? Yes, it does. <laughs> and it's unfortunate. <laughs> it's very unfortunate but here's the problem uh, another thing is that where, where we are now we're in the information age and I just recently told somebody I said YouTube is free yeah YouTube, yes you know how much you can learn just watching YouTube and taking notes oh listen that's how I started this podcast there you go say, well, yo man what did you do to start a podcast well, you YouTube go. bro YouTube University that's yeah. what you call it but yes and it, and it breeds generational curses it, it breeds generational illiteracy because when you have bad credit you are and you don't do nothing about it you're keeping yourself in the bad credit cycle mm. so your credit will determine where you live it determines your zip code so then we're talking about the lack of resources because of where you live we're talking about the lack of education because of where you live Think about it. And like you said, they took it out of schools a long, long, long time ago. Why? Yeah. Right. Because they don't want to breed smart people. Well, they you know, they want to keep us. They want to they keep, keep us, us in the warehouse. They, they want to keep, keep us, us dumb so we can keep working for them. Yeah. So they can keep leveraging us so they can stay rich. Rich. One thing rich and wealthy people understand is leverage. But people with poor mindsets, and mind you, I said mindsets because poor is a state of mind. Mm-hmm. People with poor mindsets don't understand leverage and what that does. For the rich and the wealthy, when you can leverage other people, that's how they keep themselves rich. Oh. That's how they keep their money circulating. Now I remember, I remember hearing some things that were saying that um, in the the wealthy with the upper class, there's no mm-hmm. white or black, no bigotry. It's just rich and poor. I'm what not. De- uh, I, I'm not there yet. But uh, <laughs> God said I can have it if I go after. If you it. go after. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, because uh, you know, at that point, I guess the only thing that uh, the only color that does matter is the green. It's green. And it, it, even still to this day, you're not going to tell me they still don't look at the, the you know the folks that look like us sideways just because of the color of their skin. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, let's let's be for real. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. True and false question number three. Let's do it. Does lack of financial education make it easier for the youth to pick up bad financial habits? Of course it does. Um, Because, like I said, lack of the financial education is going to keep you in certain neighborhoods. So Mm. so now that you're in certain neighborhoods, now you're talking about subpar education because of lack of technology, lack of textbooks, lack of supplies. You you know, um, you know, I grew up right here um, in Philly. Um, I live a lot in North Philly went to these schools and I remember when I graduated high school and went to college how ill-equipped I was for college oh yeah you're not the only one like I was just like I was like like high school academically was easy I went to college and was like what 
<laughs> yeah. I'm just so far behind. And then I look at my, because I went to a predominantly, uh, what they call a PWI now, predominantly white institution uh, mm-hmm. for my bachelor's degree. And uh, I just looked like, it was just like, <laughs> for everybody else. So I was just like, <laughs> I got to get with it. But eventually, you know, I turned yeah. it around. So, yeah, it's, it's just a different ball game because you, you playing with different people in the arena. So, yes, the financial literacy, man, it starts from birth, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and listen, it's important. Mm-hmm. It's important to to teach our young, especially our youth. Yeah. Because it seems that they just going nowhere fast. Exactly. And I'm glad you say that because um, we actually do have a financial literacy program where we can actually go into schools and teach them about financial literacy. Um, We also have a scholarship program as well. That contributes oh. to the children. Yeah, yeah. Oh. That can, uh, contributes that right to high school seniors and college freshmen. And guess what? Anybody can apply. The parents need not to be a um, a client of our company. They anybody can in the country can apply. High school seniors, mm. college freshmen. The application comes out uh, in the beginning of December each year. Oh, we definitely got to put that in the description when we air this episode. Of course. You know, Definitely. that is a must. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we definitely got to pump that out. We got to pump that. See, Philadelphia, we do big things in Philly. Yeah. We do big things. Yes, we do. I keep saying, uh, Hollywood going to recognize. Yeah. I mean, they do. Don't get me wrong. They, like, they don't know <laughs> all the talent that come out yeah. of this city. Come and we on. got some big time talent. Mm-hmm. We got some big time talent. Mm-hmm. So last question. Does financial literacy help prepare our youths for emergencies? True or false? Yes. As long as you got the right teacher. Why? Because um, you have to save. You do. Save the money. And like I said, something I said a a few minutes ago Mm -hmm. about the whole, oh, I got this credit card for emergencies. Uh, Uh, Yeah, yeah, that was me. That is a big lie. Use your credit cards for everything and then pay them off. Why? Because you are building your credit you're helping your credit in order for a credit card to help you you have to use it and pay it period so yes it does prepare us for emergencies financial literacy because our kids need to know how to budget Mm -hmm. they need to know how to save they need to know how to uh, pay debt down when it's needed we need to teach our kids better we need to teach them better than what we did okay okay. we gotta prepare them better so if I wanna hire you how would how would I pay you, or or is there a certain pay structure for me, or or do you? It, it de- depends on what which service work I'm delivering. Things out, you know? it depends on, yeah, yeah. It depends on what service I'm delivering. But um, since we mainly were talking about personal credit, um, you know, I have a portal for that. Um, also a secure portal. You know, mm-hmm. so everything's safe. And, you know, all that good stuff. So. It's, it's all good. Mm-hmm. Uh, so now we're not doing Zelle and Cash App. No. Uh, no, none of that. We ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, she ain't doing that. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, she ain't doing that 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 rinky dink stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not doing that. <laughs> so now, do you work? How long would you work with a client? Um. Or is they saying, well, in it, six it depends, months I'll have you here at a certain on, level. See, see that's see that see now I have to choose. I told you I have to choose my words wisely. Yes. Because I can't tell you, oh, in six months you're gonna be done. I can't tell you that. I okay. can't predict. You can't, I can't guarantee, can't guarantee mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Um, the, the 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 goal is to is to clean you up as good as possible and to raise your credit scores. Right, because mm-hmm. I'm I'm gonna give you what you need to to keep on doing the right thing, but you know I say it's up to you to do it. I'm gonna tell you what you need to know, and then I got plenty of my clients, mm-hmm. even people that are not my clients, they know what I do. They see me just about every day on Facebook. They hit me up, they hit me up on Messenger, they text me, they yeah. call me, whatever. If you were once my client and you need advice or something, I'm still talking to you. You ain't you don't fall off the face of the earth for me unless you decide to do that. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, I'm here to enrich your mind. I want you to have better habits. I want you, and then what you learn, I want you to teach it to somebody else as well. Yeah. So even if they was a past client of mine or if they stopped my program or if they never signed on, if they just want advice, they can get it. Oh, without mm-hmm. the man charged? Because, you know, it's a, like, you know, attorneys, I'm the attorney's charge. You know, hey, man, I got charged about an hour. A phone costs like $30, $40. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I get it, but yeah. and that's another reason why um, we have these platforms. Like, it's for people to learn. I have a YouTube channel. I tell people all the time: if you want to learn some stuff, just go to my YouTube channel. Hmm. Just go to my YouTube channel. We streaming on YouTube right now. Yeah. Somebody yeah. can come yeah. right back to this anytime they want. 
<laughs> go to her YouTube channel. Yeah, and go to his YouTube channel. <laughs> this your podcast and Tyra. This John. Uh, I think the uh, but one thing I need to do uh, since we got people from all over the country tuning in. Do y'all know what a John is? <laughs> oh, ask him. Tell him look it up. It's, it's in the def- dictionary. Is it, a, it is in the dictionary. It's in yeah. Webster dictionary. Look it up. <laughs> well, John, John, person, place, or thing. Is as a noun. <laughs> the person, place, thing, or idea used specifically by. <laughs> People that are Philly natives. <laughs> yeah. It is John, not John. Well, you know, they, they can't say it right. I know, it's they John. They can't say it right. They, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean? John and Boy. <laughs> yeah, what's, right? the, what's the Boy name? What's the Boy name? Is it Bull? No, <laughs> it's not Bull. <laughs> <laughs> or the Young they always, Bull. <laughs> yeah, they, they always mess it up. They always yeah, mess they, it up. That's boy. that Philly stuff. Out of town is a hack it up. Yeah, they will. <laughs> People be like, oh, where are you from? You from New York? Nah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. I'm a Philly joint all day. Uh, listen, we, you know, <laughs> that, that's this platform. This platform is Philly. Mm-hmm. You know? So now, what's some of the most interesting things you've learned pursuing this career path? Man, how rich people own nothing and control everything. Own nothing but in control of everything. Because mm-hmm. they don't have oh, anything. My God, in you got to break that down. They don't Please, have break it down. anything in their names. They hide everything under their businesses and different trusts and under business structures and everything, man. I'm telling you, man, well, this mean, game. Big time lawyers, man. To help out with this that. game is deep. Okay, Dude, like deep we only hole, huh? scratching the surface of financial literacy, man. This game is deep. It really is. Mm-hmm. Almost makes you wonder. Do they do they even marry for love? They just <laughs> no, they don't. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna let, let. All right, come on. Let, let's talk about that. Yes, because something. Came out a few weeks ago. You heard about the uh, interview uh, with the, I always say her name wrong, Ilyana Van Zandt, something like that. You know? Oh, you talking about with the, with the, the footballer? Lady, the, the lady Ebony. And the, when she asked the lady, uh, will she marry a bus driver? Did you see oh, that? yeah. Oh, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. And, and she, only, people, only if he owns the bus. Only if he owns the bus. Kinda... And people were out, up in arms about it. And let me yeah. tell you something. I'm not mad at her. Uh, people, I'm gonna tell you something. Now. You just said, do people actually marry for love? So let, let's talk about. Even we talk about different types of infrastructures in other countries. Okay. They don't marry for love. They marry for power. Yeah, and and they marry for protection, right? Yeah. So that's the type of standard they put on their not just their name but their legacies, which folks like us don't understand. The young lady that said she would marry the bus owner and not the and driver. not the bus you gotta, driver. You gotta understand that lady's a millionaire. Um, what standard is she putting on her legacy? Her legacy is where she's passing her wealth through by getting with a guy maybe that's and that's make only forty thousand a year. Now her thing, mm-hmm. her problem really wasn't so much of the bus driver because uh, because some think of the, the other things. Said it. I, I don't because people don't understand that. <laughs> Mediocracy. We were bred to be mediocre. Mediocre. We were raised to be mediocre and average. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Keep you mediocre and average will keep you dumbed down. Something else she other said is, if he's a bus driver, is he operating at his highest skill level? Yep. Yep. Exactly what she said. Okay. Is he so? Because the more skills you have, the more valuable to to what we call the marketplace, right? Because this is our marketplace. Mm-hmm. The more skill, mm-hmm. which means that's the make the more money you'll make eventually. Maybe not tomorrow, but eventually you'll make more money because of it. So if someone bless you, if someone is not operating at their highest skill level and they're keeping themselves down here, when well, they could probably have the potential to come out here, but they're keeping themselves down here, that's what she have an issue with. But as I stated, why why would she want to be with somebody who want to keep themselves small? Mm-hmm. So if you keep yourself small, you're going to raise your children the same way. That's your children, your grandchildren, your children's children is your legacy. Is your, yeah. I read something that said, you know, that wealthy people, they plan for the next 100 years, but for the next three, four generations, while poor people plan for Saturday night. So a woman <laughs> who <what>? is <laughs> a millionaire, <laughs> yeah. why would she want to continue her legacy with somebody who just plans for a Saturday night. She needs to be with somebody who's going to plan for the next 100 years as well because that's the time she's on. I think where she, it went wrong was, of course, the social media. So, of course, they're going to clip it and, and edit. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, I think where, where she didn't explain it. 
until later on in the interview. Remember when she got pressed? She didn't explain it until later on in the interview. But mm-hmm. of course, social media. Right. They're going to clip it. But why should viral? she have to explain her standards and her preference? Why should she have to explain that? Let me tell you something. As a black woman, no other race is told that they got to settle. Other races are raised to say, get a husband, get this type of man. But mm-hmm. even if they don't get that kind of man, let's be for real. There's other races of women out here where if they actually get, you know, and I love black men. OK, so this ain't no shot at black men. <laughs> if they get with a black man, other races of women, they get they, they families will shun them. They will. They will say, hey, I don't want nothing. You, you, you yeah. want to be with him. They, and that's that's just straight facts. But that's because they want to keep that legacy. They want to keep their bloodline alive. But she, uh, yeah, she didn't explain it till later. But my question is, why should she have to explain her preference? If your preference is dark-skinned women, if your preference is light-skinned women, whatever your preference is, Mm -hmm. do you feel like you need to explain that? No, that's just what you like, right? Yeah, yep. But, 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 so what she understands is she has to put a standard on her legacy and we're told to go ahead and settle we are we were raised to be average and we were raised to settle um and 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 it's a shame and that's part that goes back to the mindset Mm -hmm. game from you know our parents our grandparents our great-grandparents as well but you know to to not settle in mediocrity that has to be a conscious decision period mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay she says she don't want a bus driver she said she want the owner she said she want the owner she want the owner and i'm gonna tell you why she wants the owner business owners think different than employees oh, of course business owner mindsets and employee mindsets they, are they think much more broader separate animals she needs somebody who understands her and someone who just gets and keeps an employee mindset like i said they're keeping themselves small. They're not going to understand her. And then they're going to come back with that whole, oh, she a masculine woman. She this. <laughs> she that. that. That's not a masculine woman. No, that's a woman that knows what she wants. Period. And, of course, people took stuff out of context. And then people's feelings was hurt, too. Let's be for real. You, you think you think, you think think their feelings was hurt? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we asked to see if people feeling this hurt. They, yeah. <laughs> well, since we talk about it, let's go on to the, it's almost like this this red, red pill content. Mm, mm. Lord yeah. Jesus. This, this, yeah. this, this stuff took a turn. Yeah, I mean, we this, 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 listen, but we, guess we, what? we, we guess what? I'm, I'm, I'm here for it, though. It's yeah, I mean, we're there now. It's all good. You know, I mean, it's to me, I'm going to tell you, to me, it's, 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 it's entertaining because I'll be laughing. Mm-hmm. I'll be, I, I be laughing. I mean, look. I come from a man's man type of t- yeah. type, type of family. Right. You know what I mean? Military, sports. Yeah. You know what I mean? You were... No one is going to tell me how to be a man. Right. Because I know there's men in my family who raised me... Exactly. ...on how to be a man and, and how a man should act. So when I listen to these guys and they be like... Well, you know what I mean? You want, I'm like, man, these boys. <laughs> they boys. Yeah, like, man, these, you these, just hit, these you boys. You just hit the nail yeah. on the head. Because <laughs> yeah. unfortunately, we got a, a lot of guys grew up around feminine feminine energy and women and all that yeah. stuff. And they talk, like I said earlier. And they feed that, off of that. That young bull stuff. They, they, some of the women that they have on these panels mm-hmm. feed off of it. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, let me tell you something. The women in my, in my family are very headstrong. Right. You know what I mean? Because we, we come from the South, so very you know, headstrong. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you got to be that type man right? to make them be with you or, or, or follow you, submit to, to each follow other. You, you, right, you, right, you know right, what I'm saying? Exactly. Follow you, right? Because yeah, ex- mm-hmm. the men are the head of your household. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They not... You know, I, I couldn't even imagine my grandmother or my mother be like mm-hmm. just listening to this type Content, they'd be mm-hmm. like, "What? The, what the hell is this?" <laughs> <laughs> no, hey, I mean, it's really, but to me, it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, I, I lay in bed and I it's look a, at it and it I laugh. It give you a good laugh. Yeah, it give, gives me a good laugh. Uh-huh. Boy. That's this red pill content, boy. Yeah, I love it. I crazy. love it. Yeah. I love it. Oh, oh my god, it, man, we only got like seven minutes left. Damn, that's a shame. <laughs> we, were, we were going. This your podcast, boy. We were going. This John right here. <laughs> this John right here. <laughs> so let, let, let's get let's let's get some closing. Okay. Let's so, go. what's 
in the next five years, where do you see Tyra? The next five years? The next five years. Wow. Um, actually, um, you know, other than, you know, I want to have a, a bigger house. <laughs> I want to have those <laughs> things. Like, I'm, I'm talking about I want hundreds of thousands in the bank. Yeah. You know, my, my, my little one off in private school. I want a bigger house. I want to... Um, you know more investment properties and event spaces mm. and you know i want my money working for me you know and i'll continue to make money while i'm asleep i think they think it was warren buffett that said if you don't find a way to make money while you're sleeping Ooh. you're gonna be working till the day you die and that's something else rich and wealthy people Ooh. understand passive income passive income that other folks do not understand so more and more passive income more and more multiple streams of income yes, you know yes. you got um you know if you know about uh dr george c frazier mm -hmm. he says um each year you should be doubling um your streams of income i'm actually going to go see him each year you should be doubling mm -hmm. double your streams, your not, streams not, not, not necessarily the amount but of course it's going to be more if you add yeah, streams yeah, but yeah. you should be doubling your streams of income i'm actually going to go see dr frazier this summer too and he, oh man, yeah. man i want to go yeah I I'm actually, if you want to go i'll put you on yeah, yeah <laughs> let, me know. let me know i'll definitely put you on mm -hmm. so now also i want to i want to ask do you work with other financial educators or you're just a one woman show um, so I, I do have the help of credit attorneys, no, number one, because I do have a, a a corporate structure behind me as well. But I do work with other financial educators as well. Um, you know, like I said, I have mentors. Okay. Okay. You know, and when mentors are talking, you know, I got a pen and a paper in my you, hand. You taking it all in? I'm taking notes, man. I got mentors, man. Get yourself a mentor, man. One, I just saw one of my mentors pop across the screen, man. Just, like I said, it's, you don't know it all, but mm -hmm. and that's an, that's another thing um, that we got to get away from us as people thinking we know it all and can do everything ourselves. We are not meant to do anything by ourselves, man. This this is we got to learn how to come back to collectivism. Yeah, we we got to stick together, y'all. Yeah. We got to break it down. We got to stick together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Stop all this. Yeah. We do. Stop all this. Oh, oh. Come together, man. But you know that that what they did to, to our ancestors in slavery, they did exactly what they said what they, they were going to do. It's, hundreds and hundreds of years of separation. We could keep them separated. Yep. And they've done it. So that was so that we can't stay together. But man, I'm telling y'all, you got to make the conscious decision that you're not going to be a separatist. Okay? Y'all heard you heard the woman. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, T Money Tyra. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad you joined us on this joint podcast. I'm so glad that you uh, invited me. Yeah. So you know, you know, know what I mean? No, you mean you got to come back. You know, anytime, man. This is man. I live for this type of stuff. I yeah. Mean, you know, what I mean, giving us some of that financial education. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm gonna get some behind the scenes info. So. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, because there's certain I, things I can't talk about on air. Yeah, yeah. You, can't, yeah you can't be giving so, us all. Yeah, sometimes you got to talk about stuff off the air. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look, you probably somebody in the living room like this. <laughs> yeah. Hold on, what she say? Yeah, what she say? Rewind that? Rewind that? Uh, what yeah, she say? Yeah. <laughs> it's like that sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, real quick now, how many clients do you normally take on? I, well, um, it depends on exactly what they need. But for the folks that I'm take putting into my my uh, program, um, you know they're going through the financial literacy program. I could take an unlimited amount of clients because I got a corporate structure behind me that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's backing me up when it, when it comes to that. But some of the other things um, that I help with, you know, my I have to pace myself a little bit. But uh, other than that. Um, yeah, we can just come on. If you need help with your personal credit, come on. Come on. Uh, so now, bring do, it on. Do you do like sessions or or some sort of big um, what what they call them um, uh, conventions? You know, what I mean, set or you just primarily just one on one. Are you? Or, or, here you go. Are you giving out master classes? <laughs> I need to start giving out master Give it, classes. But listen, I've done, do but, some master but classes. But let, let, let me tell you that I've done things online. Um, like I said, this uh, you know this game right here. I put the game out here to the best of my ability. Like 
um you know i do i do do sessions like this i, I put them online I, you know like like i stream them like this because uh -huh. you know we are streaming in like eight different places right now in case you didn't know okay oh yeah listen <laughs> so if y'all can see how many screens she yeah. got going on here <laughs> i got my you own little, be like he got the real media <laughs> podcast here i got my little bootleg stuff but y'all can see me though that's what's important okay she came in the yeah. door she had a whole lighting system and everything <laughs> I i'm like well whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I do. I'm walking down the <laughs> but, but yeah but we do uh we so we go around the country and um we, we, we give financial literacy game that's one wow. thing i do love about this business I, I travel around the country that's what's uh, up yeah 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 that's what's up um um a couple of weeks ago um with one of my business partners we did do like a, a entrepreneur workshop um, I talked a little bit about financial literacy, but we also had uh, TD Bank there, um, somebody that did life insurance, uh, because we, we just talking about things that are important. Life insurance is your utmost, one of your utmost important things you everybody should have. Yes. Like, yes. it breaks my heart yes. to see GoFundMes. It does. But not only does it break my heart, it's irresponsible. It's hell. I completely agree with you. It, I completely you know, agree with you. Man... So but, any, anybody you want to give any flowers to that uh, before we uh, wrap this up? Um, no, of course. Some I, shout gotta think, I gotta thank the Most High, man. Uh, huh. First and foremost, for allowing me to be in this space, mm -hmm. uh, for allowing me to be able to touch people's lives and to show up. And uh, like I said, I thank my boy Reese because you know I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Yeah, yeah that's, that's um, my mentioning tip. my name, and of course, thank you. Ah, oh, <laughs> listen, now you gotta come back anytime. You tell I, me I, I said financial educator. Mm -hmm. Oh, you booked immediate, <laughs> immediately. <laughs> I appreciate that. I said, just tell me when, man. Just tell me when. And I'm oh, up. man. This John podcast. This John right here. Yeah, I was there with my homegirl, Tyra Jacqueline, <laughs> financial literacy educator. <laughs> So look, we about to wrap this up. I wrap it up. You want you want you want you want to take it home, or 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 you want you want me to take it home? Um. Well, I'll just say, um, if you need any assistance, um, hit me up. At the end of the day, um, you can you can text me at eight four four two four three four nine zero one. You mm -hmm. can inbox me on social media, Facebook, Drop them socials. Yeah. Um. I'm Drop Tyra Jacqueline or the Credulator. You know, some of us old enough to know where I got that from. You know that percolator. <laughs> so we old enough for that, right? With a percolator. <laughs> percolator a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. Inbox me, text me, whatever. You can hit. You can hit me up, and um, you know, we'll go from there. Let's just see what you got going on. A lot of people, um, credit ain't as bad as they think it is. Some people are just afraid that whole not yes. knowing thing. Yeah. And but we people have to choose to not to remain ignorant though. Yeah. You know. So. Y'all heard yeah. that. Y'all heard that. Wait, so wait, man, wait. It's Let's wrap this up right here. Uh, yeah. Wrap it up, wrap it up. Oh, <laughs> you gonna play the sad music? We gotta play the sad music. We got. Yeah. When I see you again. <laughs> so look, man, we are out, man. Deuces, man. We love y'all, man. This joint podcast. Thanks everybody for joining, man. Thank you for joining. Y'all have a great night. Be safe.